Folks, welcome back to the mountain. As you can see behind me, those chickies are getting rather large. So we got some work to do to get ready for two more weeks when we process. So one of the things I've been working on is the chicken plucker here. Um, we can't find chicken pluckers anywhere. Everyone's sold out because so many people bought chickens this year. So I'm working on that. That's an upcoming video. The other thing we're going to need is a scalder. Now, I was just going to use a turkey fryer with the propane fire coming up and doing it that way. Um, but I thought regulating the heat might be a little difficult to do it that way. And I looked online and uh, scalders are expensive. So I come up with a way to make my own. Uh, let me show you that now. So what we have is we have a turkey fryer pan and I purchased a hot water heater element and a water heater thermostat. Now, if you look at this thermostat, I don't know if you can see it. It says on the left there, 181 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, a residential one only goes up to 150. However, commercial goes up to 181. So we can use this for scalding and for the shrink bag. So the first thing we need to do is cut a hole to get this in to the inside of it. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I don't want to drill a big round hole. All I want is to be able to fit this end in. Now if we look at that, it is one inch wide. So what I want to do on the pan, I want to mark a hole that's one inch wide. So all we'll do We'll take our measurement here and we'll take a marker and we'll go ahead and measure that. I'm holding it upside down, I know. So we're going to mark here and then one inch here. And we're going to go ahead and drill a couple holes and then cut them. All right, as you guys know, I like my auto punch. It works awesome. We're going to go ahead and use the auto punch. And then we're going to drill quarter inch holes. Now what we're going to do, we're going to get our skill saw and just cut that out. Correction, not skill saw, jigsaw. And all we're going to do, we're going to just cut between those two holes. Now we just want to see if that fits, and it fits nicely. So we're going to take that gasket out of there, and then we're going to put a big rubber gasket on there. So we're going to cut some rubber to fit this, and then we're going to have to drill holes to bolt that in there. All right, what I've done now. I've got the hole cut, so I'm going to slide that in, and I marked and drilled out the 4 3 8 holes. I have this piece of rubber, I put that on there, it's like a rubber gasket. I just cut a piece of rubber to fit, cut a slot through to put it over like that, and then I cut out for the bolt holes. We're just going to put that through like that, and then we're going to put our bolts in. We'll do two for now. Like that. And then what I did on the inside, I've got these pieces of rubber that I cut and I drilled small holes in. And what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to slide that over each bolt. And all that's going to do, that's just going to keep it from leaking. washer and then a nut. Hopefully you can see this. So if you look down inside there, right here, I've got the bolt 
some rubber, a washer, and a nut. And we're going to do the other three and then tighten them up. feeding that rubber on there. So it's just like a little gasket to just keep this from leaking. You put a metal washer and then a nut. And that's it. Tighten that by hand. We've got two more to do. If I can find my little bolt. And there's one of them. There. I did take a hammer, kind of flatten this down a little bit. It should be easier to do. The washer. And a nut. I'm trying to show you, but this is tricky. Okay. Last bolt. Right through here. A wa oh, rubber washer. We need our little rubber washer. It goes on there. Kind of just feed that through. I'm turning the bolt a bit, kind of threading it on because I made the hole so it's tight on there. And we'll put a metal washer. And then a nut. This ain't going to look pretty, but it's also not costing me $250. So I have all four on. You can kind of see them in there. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten them down. Now we just tighten up our bolts. I'm just bending the metal quite a bit, but I'm thinking that's going to be okay. So there we go, all four are in there and nice and snug. So the next thing we got to do is we have to mount the thermostat. And that we're going to mount over here. And all that works is as it heats up right here, that heats up when it when it reaches temperature, it'll shut the um, it'll shut the heating element off. So we're going to mount for this. We're going to set this up over here over here so we got to drill two holes for this I'm going to put this up a little higher and then we'll just drill two holes for that we'll drill a hole for this one then what I want to do is put the screw in and then I'll just drill the other hole where this screw is at so that they don't go in there. Right there. And then this one will go right here. And that's perfect. Just like that. We'll have to bend this in a little bit too to make sure that that is on the uh, that the sensor is on the metal. So there we have it. We've got the element and we've got the thermostat mounted on the inside. I just have rubber uh, gaskets I made out of just some sheet rubber I had lying around. 
So those are all bolted in. Now all we got to do is wire them up according to the directions, which won't be difficult at all. I've got this wired up. It's pretty simple. I have one lead going to the element, one lead going to the thermostat, and then I have a wire between the two of them. And that's all it is. The thermostat makes or breaks the circuit. That's it. So now all we got to do is fill it up with water and then give it a try. Okay, we're now full of water. We're plugged in. We have power going to it. I put the meter on it. I can already see it. I touch the element. It is hot. So now we'll just wait and see how long it takes to heat up. The water in the hose was kind of warm. So we're already at... We're at 85 degrees now, 84.9. Hmm. Oh, it's coming up. It's coming up. I can see bubbles coming up off the heating element too. So it is indeed working. It's definitely warmer around it. And we'll see how hot it gets before it shuts the thermostat off. I got the thermostat set to 150 right now. A little more than 150, but we can always turn that up and down. Turn it down a click. There, we turned it down just a hair. No, we didn't. So, we'll just keep an eye on it. Sit and wait, sit and wait. We'll see how long it takes. I just heard it kick off. We're gonna go ahead and check the temperature of the water inside. And we are at like 154 and a half so we're gonna leave it right there um yeah we're gonna leave it right there we're gonna call that good i did turn it down just a hair as you can see it's like just below 150 right now so it's at 154 is what the temperature actually is of the water so we're gonna leave it right there this should work wonderfully for us um, and it was a pretty, pretty easy design. So the only other thing I might do, well, I don't know. We'll see. So that's it, folks. That is our chicken scalder at the ready. Ready to go. Next, we'll work on the plucker some more. Well, that's it from the mountain for today, folks. Those guys behind us, two more weeks. We're gonna, It's going to be processing day. Send them home. Sending them all to freezer camp. So... Without further ado or more ado, I don't know, but we're going to end this video now. Please subscribe to our channel. Leave some comments. Nobody comments on our videos. Leave some comments, please. Um, tell us what you want to see. If you like what you're seeing, you want to see more, tell me how annoying I am. I know I can be. So subscribe, hit the notification bell, tell people about us, share our videos, and as always, God bless.